Hello and welcome to another Make a Code Monday video. My name is Max. I'm a programmer at the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library. And today I'm coming to you live on tape from our Cookstown branch. The project I would like to share with you today is really a deep dive into using functions when programming for the microbit. So of course the microbit is a small microcontroller that you can program. Um, right now I have a small program running on it that when you press the A button it toggles the LEDs on its screen uh, very quickly in this random pattern. The code used to create this is pretty simple. It's a function which includes a repeat block that repeats the toggle block a whole bunch of times. And so what I would like to share with you today is using this code, this toggling code, as a way to demonstrate functions, but also, you know, how to make the LED screen light up in a fun pattern, I guess, as well. All right, let's get started. If you go to makecode.microbit.org, you can start a new project. I'm going to call this project toggle and click create. So the um, make code editor for microbit is pretty fancy. It has a whole bunch of um, options here in the center, your drawers, which we'll use to pull out certain blocks from to create our code. Far left is a simulator where you can see the result of that code. And the right hand side is a canvas where you compose your code blocks. First things first, I'm going to get rid of the forever and on start block because I want from the input drawer an on a button pressed block. We'll use this block to build the main functionality of our code and then adapt it for use in a function later. I want to toggle some LEDs. I want to turn LEDs on or off. And so in the LED drawer, we have a toggle X zero Y zero block. So this is the block that will actually affect the state of our LEDs. Right now, it's going to toggle light 00, zero on. This, of course, refers to our microbits LED screen, which has five LEDs across and five LEDs down for 25 total. Um, light 00, zero is the top left LED there on the screen. So when I press the A button, it just turns that light on or off. <laughs> Pretty simple. We could make it a little more exciting um, really quickly by using the math drawer to pull out the pick random 0 to 10 block. And so by placing that here, um, we can return a number from 0 to 4 uh, because the LEDs are indexed 0 to 4, and then duplicate that for the Y. And so the pick random block will return a number within its given range. Meaning that now, when I press the A button, it turns on a random LED, turns on another random LED, and so on and so on. And eventually, if it chooses the same random number, it'll turn off the LED that is presently on. So, of course, you can click the A button a bunch of times, but it sure would be nice if we can automate that, at least at first, with a loop. So under the loops drawer, we're going to repeat something a number of times. So repeat four times. You can click over your pick random block. We can choose a number, you know, any old number. So I'm going to say 100. And then we want to add a small pause so that it doesn't happen all at once. So under basic, we're going to use the pause milliseconds 100. So this will pause for 100 milliseconds. Not too bad, 100, 100. Press the A button and it does just that. A hundred times it toggles around random, random LED, pauses for hundred milliseconds, and then just keeps on going and going and going until it's done this 100 times. This isn't too bad and I really do like the toggle effect on the LED screen, but this is where we get to introduce our function. And so if you haven't used functions before, they're hiding under the advanced label here in our toolbox and then the functions are first on that list. And so if I click on that, we can then click make a function and give our function a name. And so I'm going to call mine super toggle. And then um, you might notice this band at the top. 
after the words add a parameter and this I think is where things get really exciting because you can add different parameters that'll enter your function and then do some sort of result based on those parameters and so by clicking the number button twice we can put two numbers into our function that we'll use later um, by default they're called num and so num for the first one is actually not a bad thing the first um, parameter will be the number of times that our loop repeats and the second parameter will be how long it sleeps and so I'm gonna name this one sleep um, and so when I press done a function appears and it has these two little placeholder variable bubbles based on the parameters that we have determined when we were making the function and so we can just click and drag this whole thing we made earlier and pop it into our function. And again, with every move we make, things are just getting more and more thrilling, I hope, and this is, our, I think, a real jump in excitement. The parameters we made are now live kind of variables. And so when I put that num1, sorry, num parameter into the repeat block, and I put the sleep into the pause block, that means when we call our function, it'll put in those parameters into the rest of our code and then act on them. And so the utility here is that we can call this function any number of times in different parts of our code. And then instead of having to copy and paste the whole loop on its own, we're just using the function call to run with the parameters we've in inputted for that particular time we want to run that function. That all sounds pretty confusing, but in practice it's pretty simple. Under the function functions drawer, once again, we call super toggle. And we can put that, you know, right where it came from on the on button A pressed. And so now we get to input these parameters. And so the first one is the number of times the code runs. I can say 50. And then the second number is how long we want it to sleep. I'll choose 150 this time. So now when I press the A button, it runs that code for me and it repeats it 50 times and it sleeps for 150 milliseconds. So the heart and soul of a function is this idea that we can have a thing that takes in an input, does some processing, and then returns that output onto our microbit screen in this case. The functions are useful because, you know, for example, I can open the input drawer and drag out another uh, input handler and say instead of on A button press, well, let's say on B button pressed, when I press the B button on the micro bit, instead of having to copy and paste this whole thing twice, you know, for each time I want to use it, instead of having to go through all that kind of malarkey, you instead just pull out another function call. And so this is equivalent to, you know, having to copy and paste the body of the function, but instead of having all that mess and all that reproduced copy and pasted code, you just have the function call. So on B button pressed, you can say 200 times and go really fast, I don't know, 25 milliseconds. And then of course we press our B button and it does just that. And so, um, again, the utility here is that these functions take up less space, but also if you have a major change to make in the way your function works, you only have to change it once. Let's just say, for example, you've changed your mind and you really, for your project, only want to toggle LEDs on the left-hand side of the screen, of the microbit screen. So for the um, X, coordinate instead of picking a random number from 0 to 4 you know we've changed our mind it's going to go from 0 to 2. Now when we press the B button well it only toggles LEDs from 0 to 2. Imagine if in your program you had half a dozen two dozen different parts where you needed to toggle the screen or something to do some sort of animation and if you had to go back to each one of those blocks of code where you've copy and pasted this repeat block, you would have to go back and manually change that um, pick random block for every single one. Because you've copy and pasted them, those different copy pasted blocks 
don't have any relationship to each other. You've changed one, so what? You have to change every single other one. But in our code, since we've put this toggling into a function, we just have to change this code at its source within the function. Then, wherever we want to actually use our ch new changed code, it already is. It already is changed. And so by using the function, it not only saves work on having to, you know, copy and paste a lot of things that are add bulk, visual bulk to your code, it also saves you the trouble that if you've made a mistake or if you've made sort of a new enhancement that you want to do in your code, you only have to change it within the function. And so that's all I really wanted to share with you today. I hope that you find a way to use functions in your own code and that you, you know, maybe share your results with us here at the library. Um, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.